huge 10 point opening day of Iowa's bow season. But uh, so far my season is not going well. We are in a tree stand in Iowa, Southern Iowa. Finally back in Iowa from Nebraska. It's really, really cooled off a lot better here in Iowa than it had been. That's why I went to Nebraska in the first place to try and get one shot while it was warm here. It was cool back off. It's that time of year. I know does love to come to this food plot and I know good bucks in the past this time of year have come to this food plot to check on does. So that's what I'm hoping on. I'm hoping to get a good buck to come check on a situation of the does here on a green food plot here on November 6th. Chase phase is on. Small bug, but he's grunting and chasing a doe around, which is a sign it's getting ready to happen. No shooters have showed up, but we still got a little time before dark. But that is cool, cool stuff right there. November the 6th. Mark that, mark that date down. From here, it gets nothing but better. Well, there's no question the weather got cold. We got a northerly wind and uh, you know, the temperatures dropped probably 20, 30 degrees and the bucks were moving. And that's when we start seeing shooters. I actually started thinking that, that most of my good bucks, upper end bucks were lost to EHD. Uh, so I was really nervous up to this point, but things start opening up, especially the morning that Lucky showed up. Unfortunately, Tony couldn't get on him uh, quick enough for me to get a shot at him when he walked through about a 40 yard shooting lane. But nevertheless, good bucks were moving and Lucky was in the house. That was Lucky. We named him Lucky because two years ago, Dylan York was filming me and I almost got a shot and a wind switched. Fellow Buckman, Dylan York, named him Lucky. Well, last year he came through, had a beautiful shot at him, screwed up and I hit him high. I mean, so high, it just caught the top of his back. Um, so consequently, he's really lucky. And now he's not been hanging around too much, probably because he, because I hit him here in this hollow. But lo and behold, here on November 14th, we're seeing a lot of does this morning, a lot of rut action. Here comes Lucky off the hill, came right for us. And by the time, it's one of those deals where I could have shot him, but the camera wasn't on him yet. And by the time the camera got on him, he had started back up where he was too far to shoot. But that was Lucky. Lucky's in the house good sign. At least we know Lucky didn't get hit by EHD. He's still around and he's a big five and a half, six and a half year old stud. So maybe he'll come back by or one of the other shooters will show up. But it's a good morning. We've got enough does in here. I have a lot of confidence between now and hopefully noon. We'll see a good one. Another good one. Good morning. We'll be back. It is Friday, November 20th. And I'm really excited because it seems like lockdown is starting to end. Um, although I didn't see any shooters yesterday, shot a big doe last night. And all I saw was does and then a few small bucks. Um, but just the signs of it, I'm seeing signs that they're still breeding and they're still pinned up and uh, locked down. But as soon as that lockdown, as soon as those does get to where most of them are bred, those big, big boys will be on our feet searching could be the all-time best time to kill your upper end bucks no question some of my biggest bow kills have been during this time frame between now and and thanksgiving i've got till next week i go back to the fire department the day before thanksgiving and i am going to give it heck all the way to the end
here comes a bug right there. That's a good bug. That's a shooter. Well, for the third time, Lucky gets by and uh, lives up to his name, and I was disappointed, but I was upbeat in the fact that I had several shooter bucks on there. They were showing up on trail camera, bucks were moving, and I didn't spook Lucky that bad, so I was still in the game for him and several other good bucks on the farm. Well, whether or not I had a cameraman, I just kept hunting. I was pressing on. I was buckless so far. Uh, so I was on a mission. I wanted to get one of these bucks shot. So, you know, you just got to stay persistent, watch your wind, hunt the right stands, don't pressure them too much, and uh, hopefully something good will happen. Um, I'm not in a uh, security cover spot, but I'm close to it. I'm on a real world wildlife food plot right here, harvest salad, but I got this food plot tucked right against a doe travel corridor and bedding right south of me. Great big doe bedding area. So maybe I can catch a good buck coming through. Well, I didn't have much time to think. I saw antlers, grabbed my bow, looked, and saw he wasn't a shooter. Probably two and a half year old buck, just a super, super good buck, up and comer. He was on that doe. A lot of people would never shoot a doe right with a buck, especially when they're grunting and rutting and chasing. But you know what? Uh, I knew there wasn't a mature buck around, and I wasn't going to shoot him, so I was going to fill my doe tag right there. I just shot the doe that that buck was with. She finally got around here and uh, fed right here in front of me in the food plot. Pretty cool stuff. I had those deer around me all morning and he had her penned up and I'm needing meat for the freezer. I've got doe tags. She was right here and I just drilled her double lung. I needed that confidence to get back up. I've uh, been doing some poor shooting lately. Perfect. And now I can roll the buggy. Well, I'm by myself, I can roll the buggy right up to her and load her in the buggy. <laughs> cool job. Meat for the freezer. We'll be back. You're watching Buckman. Well, after getting back to work, you know, obviously I was depressed. I was buckless. And uh, now it's early December, and I was talking to my film partner, Chris Kosmeyer, and he said, well, Steve, what's your schedule? And I said, well, I'm off about the first four days of December, and uh, bow season is still in in Iowa. The shotgun season doesn't come in to December's 5th. And he said, well, why don't I get with you? I've, I've got a couple bucks down, and uh, why don't I come try and film you? Get the job done. Well, for a little pond, you have to have a westerly wind flow. And in particular, uh, southwest wind works the best. And that way, when deer get past you, they don't win you. And that's the key factor to hunting a good travel corridor type spot, especially later in the year where you're tucked up against that bed and trying to catch that buck coming out of the bed. Smaller deer will get past you, and you don't want those deer to win you. Well, as time wore on, several deer went past the stand. All of a sudden, I looked up and saw nothing but horns. I recognized the deer, and it was old Lopside. I told Chris, he's on our hit list. He's a buck that I know well, got plenty of trail cam pictures of him. Uh, one side's higher than the other. I knew that if that buck came closer, I was going to get a shot. was feeding on acorns, coming closer and closer. It took a while, but he finally gave me a good broadside shot, ranged him at 35 yards. Took my time and uh, let the arrow fly.
what a year. <laughs> I'm going to say 100 days, or not 100 days, but I'd say uh, 60 days, Yeah. probably in a tree stand. And we spent a lot of them together. A lot of them together, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, man. He's not the monster of the woods, but he's uh, he's a buck I wanted to get out of here. I didn't want him to breed. He's a big mainframe. He looks like an eight, but he's he's actually just a seven. And he was seven last year, so I wanted to get him out of here. And um, I know I'm not talking that lot loud because I got two buck tags, but uh, I think I'm done for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, I don't even know if he made it out of the creek. He crossed the creek. Did he? Yeah, he crossed. I mean, he didn't go far. Did you ever see him go down? No. I didn't either. No. Right there. That's a lot of arrow in him, man. He's got to be dead. I am not seeing any blood, though. Well, we scoured the farm the next day, and uh, we just couldn't find the deer. It was clear and obvious that that deer stopped bleeding. I don't know what happened. But again, it was just the way my season has went. School hard knocks, you know, and it was continuing with me on this hunt. Um, the only thing I could hope for is that he wasn't lethally hit, and uh, later on he'd show back up. That's, that's all I could pray for. Um, it's not, not part of bow hunting that you like, but unfortunately... It's, it's something that does happen and, and you gotta live with it and move on. This past fall, we started getting pictures of old Lopside once again. So now he's a five and a half year old stud with the uneven rack and number one on the hit list darn near because I did not want him to spread his genes. Luckily, a good friend of mine's son, Chad Davis, drew a coveted Iowa bow tag for last fall. And lo and behold, what walks in front of him on his second day of his hunt, old lopside so he put a great shot on the deer deer ran 55 yards and dropped unfortunately he forgot to press the record button on the camera that i gave him to use to try and film the hunt so didn't get the hunt on film but that closes the chapter to a great whitetail and a great story of old lopside well welcome back to the show had a little brief interruption for my late season muzzleloader hunt here in southern Iowa and that was I had to go to the ATA show with Chris Kostmeyer. We really had a great time at the ATA show. It's uh, no great secret. I mean it's where you need to be in this industry to see where the new products come out, meet your sponsors and, and what kind of products they got going for the new year. Uh, but now I'm back. Here it is January 7th. It's my dad's birthday. He passed away in 2007. Happy birthday dad. I know you're, you're watching from above. Maybe he'll send a good buck out tonight. Um, he was an avid hunter, taught me everything he knew. Um, hated to lose him as early as we did, but um, hopefully Dad will send one out to, to me tonight. Happy birthday to my dad, January 7th. So we're set up here in a redneck blind on a clover patch to our west and a bean patch to our east. I'm at my neighbor's, Chris. He was fortunate enough to, to let me, actually he killed a buck earlier this year, not on film, right out of this blind. And so he's letting me hunt here uh, out of his good graces and I'm, I'm very blessed because it's, it's raining right now. We've got a rain front that just moved in. And, but you know what? I'm in a blind, I don't have a, but a few days left. You can't kill him at the house. Small buck and actually two small bucks. Oh, right there, right there. Good buck. Good buck. That's a good one. Real good one. That's Hershey. It's a buck we call Hershey. We got trail cam pictures of him. He's a giant. When I first saw him, he was not in range. So I just had a lot of patience and waited for him to get a little closer. He's broadside right now. I think I'm gonna have to take the shot. Let me see how far he is. He may not get any closer. 172. I think that's gonna be my shot right there. I'm gonna wait. Ah, oh, he just turned. That's that's okay. He's uh Slightly quartering away. I'm afraid he's not getting closer. And I don't 
think he's going to get closer. I'm going to take the shot right there. I can make that shot. Well, when I shot Hershey buckled like he was hit hard. So what I did do is I paid it attention to the exact tree that he went in when he went into the woods. So I landmarked a tree. In fact, I was going to go back, review the shot at the cabin, just talk it over and see whether we needed to wait till morning to go recover Hershey. Chris and his dad Les just picked me up and uh, waited till after. Actually, it's a uh, past one o'clock, which I wanted to. I wanted to give it a, a while, but what I did last night when he ran into this timber, uh, I watched him and I landmarked him. And I got him narrowed down and we're parked right here. Uh, I knew he went somewhere pretty close to this tree into the timber, so that's where we're gonna go look for him. <clears throat> we started walking in the timber and I, I didn't walk 30 yards in the timber and almost stumbled over Hershey. Well, here he is, a buck that we named Hershey. Uh, he started out to be the double main beam buck. Chris, my neighbor, told me, he said, this buck is on a hit list. He showed me pictures of him. He had great history with this buck. Big mature buck, big long brow tines. Basically a, a, a mainframe nine pointer with a big extra main beam here. But Chris saw him a couple evenings ago come out out of the same blind I just, I just shot him out of. And he said, that, Steve, that deer has really, really dark horns. Whatever he is, he's big, he's heavy. And uh, I want to take him, but he was a little too far for a shot. I didn't feel comfortable taking the shot. January 7th, my dad's birthday. Chris couldn't make it. Uh, he had to work at the, at the call shop, so he let me go out to the blind. I asked my dad, I said a little prayer, uh, it's, your, it's your birthday, send one out to me. And lo and behold, about 30 minutes later, about a half hour before dark, I look back and I see two smaller bucks out in the beans and out steps Hershey. And uh, I ranged him at 170 yards. Had a good quarter and away shot, good rest. Pulled right up here and he wasn't 30 yards into timber right here. Beautiful buck, great way to end Buckman season two. Right here, late season muzzleloader, January 7th. Got it done on Hershey. And I can't be more proud of this buck. Thanks dad for sending him out there. And thanks to my neighbors for letting me hunt. Good friends and, and uh, great whitetail hunting. That's what it's all about and that's what Buckman is all about telling stories about big giant whitetails like this. One of the greatest things you can take from this hunt is never give up, persistence. Go to the last minute, to the last hour, to the last second that you can possibly go and things may happen your way. It did with me on Hershey.